All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Keystone Chronicles podcast. It's been a minute, and I'll probably touch base at some point uh, on why I had the hiatus. But uh, I'm here with Aaron. Aaron, please do your introduction, man. This this is a long time coming. I said I was going to have you on the show a year ago, however long ago it was, and we're back at it. So uh, let's get to know you, brother. Hey, I uh, appreciate you having me on. Uh, looking forward to talking anything outdoors with you. And uh, but anyhow, my name is Aaron Pascaret. Uh, I live in Northwest Pennsylvania, pretty much live, breathe and sleep the outdoors. Uh, been filming my hunts for 10 years now, run a YouTube channel and outdoor group called Legendary Pursuits. Uh, we just a group of good old guys that sharing our adventures and tips and tactics that we find helpful. Uh, to help us succeed in the outdoors but again i just appreciate you having me on and i'm looking forward to this absolutely man it, like i said it's been a long time coming um i yeah, i couldn't be more grateful to have you on there too especially like you're the first guest coming back so i don't know what kind of honor that brings you but <laughs> it's an honor all right man well so that, that we got that and then also i'll be starting a youtube channel with this and then also this will be through the podcast uh, on all platforms nothing changes there um, so you said you were from Northwest Pennsylvania. Um, do you care to give like exactly like the whereabouts, close towns, county, anything like that? Uh, uh, just do boys, do boys, PA. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know what that makes it. Clearfield County, Jefferson County there. So. Okay. Okay. You guys got, you have a little bit of an elk herd there, don't you? Uh, about 45 minutes away. Um, okay. They wander down this way once in a while, but mm -hmm. the game commission usually puts a stop to that. Right. Yeah, they herd them like cows. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. I know, man. It's like their pride and joy. So, bro, let's get right down to it. I mean, the season is not done yet, right? Um, nope. We're here January 10th. Uh, we still have a little bit of uh, powder gun left. How did your season shape up? What did you get into? Did you hunt any other states? Let's just start with Pennsylvania. Yeah, this uh, was possibly my greatest season to date um, from a couple of different aspects. But going into this season, I really thought I would struggle because my wife's in the last two semesters of her uh, getting her master's degree. So it, my free time is pretty much ate up with watching the kids and making sure mm -hmm. I hold the fort down here. But uh, started off, I didn't hunt till november 8th this year Damn. which is really late for me but I'm sure uh sorry i gotta i had a pop up on my screen there <laughs> Sorry. Right. Uh, anyhow basically my first morning in the stand my buddy and i hiked into a spot that's been productive over the years in the allegheny national forest and an hour and 15 minutes into my first morning i had a buck come cruising across the hillside about 100 yards away. I uh, bleated and grunted at him a couple times, and he walked straight down to me and came into 20 yards. And uh, My shot wasn't, wasn't the best, but uh, did well on the follow through and got, got my really nice eight pointer, my, ba my best bow buck to date. And uh, I just, I kind of felt spoiled with it. Like it's, it's supposed to be harder than that, and it normally is, but <laughs> right. you'll take them when you can get them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, I mean, you, of all people know, I mean, how much time do you normally put in the woods? You know what I mean? And so one year you, you got away with one, you know what I mean? Yeah, and all that time in past years helped me mm -hmm. this year. Whenever I didn't have that time, I could, you know, I can, I have all that information stored up from previous seasons. and that really helps when you don't have, when you got to make it count, you, you have something to go off of, you know? Yep. No doubt, man. Uh, so after that, New York, uh, me and my group of guys, we usually do an out of state hunt every year. We went to Ohio starting in 2017. And then last year was our first year in New York. So we went back to New York this year. We caught the weather just perfect. We had this beautiful snowstorm come through right as we 
got to camp and it pretty much kept snowing for three days. And uh, second day, in, oh, actually the first day in New York, my my buddy shot a really nice buck just an uh, hour after daylight. And then my father-in-law also shot a buck. So we were going to recover the one deer. And I, we were uh, almost back to the truck, probably like half mile back. And there was like a, I don't know what you would call it. It was uh, kind of like a subtle ridge that ran almost parallel to the main trail that we were on. And I said, I'm uh -huh. going to hop up on there and uh, just kind of hunt my way back to the truck parallel you guys. Not one human track in the snow, right? I mean, I'm only a couple hundred yards off this trail, a couple hundred yards from the parking lot. And I come up on two or three bucks feeding and bedded right on this ridge above this main trail. And I flat out missed. <laughs> I had, I kind of, I kind of thought that I jumped him and uh, I thought he was getting out of Dodge. So I, mm -hmm. I rushed myself, but right. anyhow, I don't want to keep rambling, but I missed him. And I going into that trip, I really wanted to take, my goal was to like, if I got an opportunity, I was going to make sure I took advantage of that. So right off the bat, I, I blew that. And, and to be honest, that's probably like the third opportunity in New York at a buck that I've blown in the last two years. <laughs> so, but, uh, anyhow, the day two, we got four or five more inches of snow. This little area that I was hunting, it seemed like it got 10 inches of snow. It had more snow in this little hollow than all the surrounding area. And I was, I was tracking a buck down into this little system of bowls. And I caught movement to my right. And I look and there's a bear running about 20 yards away from me. And in New York, it's bear season. Like it, during their rifle season, bear are fair game. Mm -hmm. So like once I figured out what I was looking at, I pulled up and I made probably the best shot of my hunting career and just <laughs> dropped that bear right, right on the run, uh, probably 35 yards away and had my first New York bear. Wow. Uh, took me a while to understand what actually happened, but took him back to camp, surprised my father-in-law. He's a really big, he's really into bear hunting and I played it off. Like I had a buck in the back of the truck and he opened the tailgate and, had, uh, he about lost it. I'm <laughs> oh, sure. I'm sure. Oh, how big was it? Uh, like your average bear, 125 <clears throat> pounds. He had okay. his, uh, I don't know if you know this, but like, so cubs, they don't have canine teeth. They're too, mm -hmm. like the two big, uh, obviously, yeah, canine teeth. Uh, he had his canine teeth. So he was at least a second year bear. New York, just like, like most states, they, they send you an envelope and you uh you submit a tooth and right they're in the process of aging them and getting all that data and then they'll send you a certificate back so i'm right. wait, looking forward to that but i imagine he was a two-year-old bear yeah yeah that's that's incredible man i mean i guess you know you 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 have pa bear then too or nope i don't okay. have a pa bear i i got one in north carolina back in i think it was 2015 Okay. So it's been a while, but I love the way they taste, and uh, this one reminded me of that. So I'd, I'd like to get one more often, but it's just, it's not that easy. Right. <laughs> They're loose. No doubt about yeah, it, man. So <clears throat> you're up in New York. So now you got a PA buck down, right? You said that was November 8th, right? Yep. Uh, okay. No, that was the 9th. I hunted the, okay. the evening of the 8th, and then I got him on the 9th. All right. So we got a nice eight point on the ground. Your best PA deer with the old stick and string and then we go to New York and now we've shot a bear, right? Yeah. Are we still in New York or are we coming home? Still in New York. Okay. So day three, this would be pretty much <clears throat> the last day of our hunt. Uh, in the morning, me and my buddy, uh, we hunted this big, big mountainside and we, we ended up cutting a fresh buck track. So we decided like one thing going into New York was I wanted to, if we had snow, I wanted to, I wanted to track a deer and I wanted right. to get that experience to have it. So we set out on this buck track and we took it probably a mile, I'd say about a mile. And he was bumping. You could see how he knew where all the does were bedded. It's pretty cool when you can follow them because you can really learn a lot. But 
he would go to these little doe groups and he would just harass them and then head to the next one when he figured that there was nothing there for him. Anyhow, he he finally turned and he went down into a thicket and me and my buddy were both like, he's in there. But it was so thick, it was there's no sense in both of us going in there. So I said, well, why don't you go down like parallel the side of the thicket in case with the way the wind was, he might bump out. Well, I went slow, but I didn't go near slow enough. And I bumped him probably 50 yards in there and I, I missed him getting up out of his bed. I mean, it was just like, just where he was bedded at, it was just like, bam, and he mm -hmm. was gone. I, I probably didn't even have a chance, but uh, that's tracking deer. It's, it's not a spectator like a, sport. It's a split second decision kind of thing. All right. But anyhow, so that, that evening was our last evening and went to a, it's actually the same mountain that I got the bear on, but the opposite side, the wind was coming up, uh, I don't know, out of the west. So I got on the leeward side of the hill thinking that most of the deer would be on that side out of the wind. And I just was still hunting out across like a series of like bowls and like little creeks that came down off the mountain. And I saw five or six does in the first mile, but no bucks. And there was a group of guys driving out the other, the other hollow on the other side. And you could see where deer had come up over in front of me and already like went down over this side of the mountain. But it was about 4.30. I was getting ready to turn around because I wanted to hunt my way back to a truck, to the truck through like a new area. Like my big thing is like I like to lay eyes on stuff for the next time. Like if I can just, uh, I don't know, it's like learning the learning the land. I've never been on that part of the mountain before. Right. So anyhow, I was about to turn around and I came up over one more little rise and about 115 yards down in the bottom, there was a big body deer broadside feeding on uh, like burn bulbs. So I, I checked him and he was, I mean, he was a really nice buck. And uh, I still get like nervous like a little kid. It's just <laughs> every year I'm like, all right, man, you can, you can keep it together. And it's like, <laughs> I just start shaking like a leaf. Right. I snuck a little bit closer to him because there was some beach brush between me and him. And, uh, in the mountains, the wind is never, uh, it's never consistent. So it swirled right. and he lifted his head and looked at me. He wasn't like spooked, but he was, he was getting there. So I pulled up and I shot and he ran directly away from me up onto the next point. Light was fading, but I had snow. So I hustled down there and there was about six hairs where he stood. Mm -hmm. But they were all brown hairs, so that was that was good. And I started following him, and it probably took like 60 or 75 yards for there to be really any blood on his trail. Wow. And I ended up like shooting him through the liver. So it's just, I don't know. I guess the moral of that story is like you got to really check. Like anytime you shoot at an animal, you got to yeah. do your due diligence because it just – I don't know. Like it was a fatal shot, but I feel like that deer gets lost a high percentage of the time. Just, and I don't know if you can even blame people. Cause like, I don't know how you pick six hairs out of the dry leaves. If there was dry leaves, you know, mm -hmm. anyhow, yep. I trailed him up over the hill and he was going down, but I put the finisher on him and, uh, he was a really awesome buck. He had, uh, he's this one up here behind me, but, uh, he had four on one side. I always shoot the weird bucks, but he had four on one side and a big Y. So he's just a six pointer. But, uh, and my wife makes fun of me because I shoot all these. I can't tell you how many times I brought a six pointer home. Like it could be a, I have this one from Ohio. It's like a giant six pointer and it's like, yep, but it's a six pointer, you know? Right. But I was just, I'm super proud of that deer and really, really thankful for that opportunity. He just, I was actually, when you called me here, I was ordering a tooth aging kit to see how old he is because i think he's an older deer even though his rack doesn't i don't know if you do the whole scoring thing but it uh mm -hmm. it doesn't score anything but i think he's an older deer so that'll be interesting to find out was it a bigger deer yeah yeah like mature body uh mm -hmm. i don't know i always kind of look at their nose and like his nose was kind of like rounded off a little bit mm-hmm 
he just kind of like a dog's nose yeah he had the markers of an older deer and his teeth yeah. uh not to keep sorry not to keep rambling but uh, <laughs> that's fine <laughs> like so that the pa buck that i shot his teeth look like pretty brand new like he's definitely like three and a half but his teeth are like there's no wear to him and this new york buck are way worse like his teeth are i got you you know they're like half gone so we'll see i'll let you know whenever i get the results in on them yeah for sure man for sure let me know i've i've <clears throat> been lucky enough to shoot so mature deer on uh public land especially in ohio spot we hunt my biggest question for you is so how did you get the deer out yeah that's a story in itself <laughs> uh right <laughs> we've been packing them out okay like when we hunt the Allegheny National Forest or any of these big woods areas where like we have frame packs, usually we take the stands back. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't have my frame pack because I, I honestly, like after getting that bear, I was just kind of out there to be in the woods. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. right. I was hunting hard, like hard and, and staying with it. But like, I was good. Like I didn't need anything. Right. You were just almost content. Yeah. And, I open my pack to look at the situation. I can't find my headlamp. It's pretty much 20 minutes till dark. I'm two miles from the truck there. And uh, we use these uh, nicer radios, and I, I pulled it out, but I was still like two and a half miles from the other guy, and I hit him on it, and it he answered me. So I said, hey, uh, I was like, hey, Neil, I, I was supposed to pick him. We were supposed to pick him up, and I was like, there's no way I'm picking you up any time in the next like two and a half hours mm -hmm. and then i looked at my phone and i had one bar of signal and my other buddy was maybe three quarters of a mile away hunting the opposite side of the hill damn and thankfully he answered his phone so he came wow. over and basically i ended up dragging that deer out and my buddy was out there in front of me navigating these blowdowns like i don't know if there was like a major windstorm there or what but there was like 300 blowdowns that i had to drag this deer over <laughs> and i don't know like looking back it's just we were so far in there like to go back and even get the frame packs it was going to be like midnight by the time we then you worry about coyotes and everything i just mm -hmm. kind of made the decision to drag them out that time but it was not fun or easy it's it's a hard game to play, man. I know. I've been in a position like I know uh, <clears throat> one of the first deer that I shot on this piece, the one piece that we hunt in Ohio, it's nasty, man. It's a nasty, nasty bluffs, you know what I mean? And, uh, of course, you know, I put a gut shot on him. Now, I knew he was quartering to me, and he come in so quick, I just got the bow back, and I could only, <clears throat> I'm right-handed, I can only turn so far to my right, and my arm was against the tree. And I'm sitting, you know, and I get no time to move or nothing. And I just got, you know, cocked back as far as I could. And, I mean, he, you know, he seen me, and I wasn't even moving. And he pegged me right away, and now or never kind of moment, you yeah. know what I mean? And I, I I made the shot, and I knew it was a decent shot. And uh, I called my brother, and my brother and I are always hunting together. And I said, hey, you know, like, let's give him two and a half hours. And about an hour and a half later, my brother texts me, and is like, hey, you know, let's be careful here because it, it was getting dark and not, not, I mean, dark at night. Like it was, I shot at about 9 30 AM, but it was, it looked like it was going to rain, yeah. you know? So he said, what do you want to do? I said, well, I guess, you know, let's do it. Let's get on them. And I'm the kind of guy I lost too many deer chasing them. You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll give him as long as I can. And yep. we ended up chasing that deer and we lost blood. And, um, we took a break, just kind of, you know, talk for a little while. And it's just funny. My brother said, I'm going to walk around the other side of this little bowl just peek over this point maybe he's bedded on that point and I said okay and I'm down where we lost blood and I'm you know on my hands and knees and all that stuff and he walked the other side and just just heard a faint you know faint noise but you know as, as hunters you hear noises in the woods and you can distinguish just like the deer can distinguish you know humans and and uh yep. you know uh, something walking on four or two whatnot and lo and behold he he said dude I, I'm pretty sure your deer's down over this hill and I'm like well, I won't go down over that hill but you know, so we went down, sure as heck, you know, he was down there laying, it was a real nice eight point. Awesome. Um, got really lucky there, but, yeah. um, back, back to you. Uh, so you got, 
a buck in New York, you shot a bear in New York, you shot a Pennsylvania deer. Okay. You, you are nowhere else this year. No, I didn't have time to go okay. anywhere else. Okay. All right. I got you. Because, I mean, it, it is hard, man. It's really hard to do more than one trip. Like, I know for me, like, we were talking before we got on, and now, like, I have a child running around and stuff, and I really give it to a lot of guys because before, like, I thought I didn't have much time with work and whatnot. And yeah. Now it's like, man, like, it's, it's re- I, like, I'm really picking my battles, you know. So I'm lucky enough to have my wife that will, you know, she puts up with it enough to let me get out there and do what I need to do. But um, it's hard, man. Um, if if I can get more than, you know, I don't know, two two weeks in the woods, like, that's, that's – and I don't mean just, like, in the woods because I'm always in the woods, you know, whether it's Sunday morning before anybody wakes up or Saturday morning or whatever and I'm out hiking around yeah. or whatnot, and, you know, be back at noon kind of thing. But, you know, when it comes to hunting season, it's like – I know I'm going to get that what time are you coming home text, but she knows. She already knows. I don't even <laughs> I don't even know why I get the text anymore. Like, okay, baby, if something's dead, I'll be home. And if not, then dark is dark, right? Yeah, she lets you go out the door, right? That's, yeah, that's a number one. So I'm blessed and lucky for that. But um, so I do want to say uh, you said that that buck you were hunting in PA – is that a spot that you knew? Is that did you know that spot before? You know, is that a spot you've shot deer there before? Is it kind of new? Were you scoping it out early season? What was the deal on it? So, my buddy Justin Crosley, uh, this is kind of like an area he grew up hunting, but not that specific spot. He is like one of the best public land mountain hunters, whatever you want to say it. Like the guy has shot like seventeen bucks over the last twenty years where the deer density is like 1.8 deer per square mile. And uh, we've been scouting together since like 2018 or something like that. We came across this spot through basically like when we, if we put trail cameras out, we don't, we're not like going out and checking them and like, we don't maybe like once a year, basically like we'll put them out and we pick them up and then look at that data and then make our decisions off of that basically because we don't have time to go Mm -hmm. monitor these cameras and uh right and honestly we kind of get a kick out of not knowing what's going to come around the mountain that day Mm -hmm. but um, it's a fun so he he has shot or had an opportunity on i think four pope and young bucks the last four seasons out of that spot wow and they're Pennsylvania deer. Yep. Like the first year he hunted it, he shot a, an awesome buck. I think it was like 130 inches. But we don't even care about score there. Like I don't care about score in general, but like I just kind of like guys use, they know the reference sometimes, so I'll say it. But it's uh, like those mountain deer, they can be seven, nine years old, you know, seven or nine years old, and they score 100 inches. So like what's the point of the score? Right. Like I'll take, I'll take an eight-year-old mm-hmm. deer over – you know, 125 inch two year old any day. But anyhow, right. so I've been trying to hunt this spot with him for like three years, and every year it's like something comes up. There's like a pro- problem, like a family emergency comes up, or I don't know. I just missed it for three years here, and like this year we were like, we're doing it. You're going in there, and I don't know what it is about this spot because like. I feel like if you sent a hundred guys through that part of the the woods, they would be like, why are you here? Cause there's not really anything. Right. I mean, the big woods in general sign is pretty scarce. Right. But it's just a perfect combination of like different habitat types coming together and a little bit of terrain and those bucks in the rut just cruise right down this point. And it's just, I guess it's one of those spots where you you ride it until it's not hot anymore, you know. Yep. I've shot a lot of deer in a lot of different places, but uh, when you get a spot like that, you don't just hunt it once and be you done don't walk with past it. No, it's like we work too mm-hmm. hard to just say, well, it's not, it's too easy here because that's never the case, you know. But it's it's right. really amazing the statistics from that spot. I just. Mm-hmm. I wish I had more of them. 
but I, I don't. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah. Well, you know, and you know, there, there's a reason why them deer are using that. And I'm sure you guys have put two and two together there, you know, like whatever it is about the thermals in the predominant wind or whatnot, you know, whether it's the predominant wind or the way the wind switches in there, you know, like, Hey, we want to hunt this on the East wind. Like, you know, there's a reason, you know, that's, that's where everything's coming together. That's where the wind's swirling. They're picking up the bedding above, below, they're picking you up, whatever it is. And yeah, those spots are hard to find. Now, when you say like, like the sign is scarce, are you hunting? Is there a community scrape there? Is there rubs there? Or is it just that this is a travel corridor we found and they, they like it? The only like real sign there is, is like there's some rubs. And like we nicknamed mm-hmm. that spot Rub Line Ridge because it's pretty much okay. the only thing that is is there. There's no, you would think there would be a community scrape there, but there's just, there's not. I think like the big factor there is probably that there's a couple doe groups that live on that point and i think we've just narrowed it down to like the the week that they come into heat and like all those bucks that are on those surrounding mountains understand that that doe group every year yep is going to come into heat uh like for us there it's like november 5th through the 10th and i think most of the deer we've shot have been the 6th through the 8th or whatever but uh yeah you know, it's just, it's crazy how, from year to year, how consistent that those dates are, and the fact that the Bucks know that. Well, you know, one one thing that I, I heard you say, and I was, you know, I really understand, too, is I, I am, like, I want to shoot the bigger antler sizes and stuff, but that's also coming on the other side of me, where, like, I got to grow up, like, hunting in Ohio and stuff like that, and the deer are big, and they're not only just big, the antler size is much bigger because, you know, the soil quality is a lot better, but, you know, you were talking about the the size of the deer. And I also was blessed enough to grow up hunting in Maine and you you could bring a 160 inch deer to somebody that lives in Maine. If that deer weighs 150 pounds, they'll ask you why you (laughs) shot it. Yep. I mean, and that's just the way it is, you know what I mean? So even you like, you know, hunting up in New York, like I know a couple of guys that are Adirondack guys and they're the same way. They, 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 they could care less, you know, what your deer antlers look like. No, obviously you're mature deer, you know, you, you got mass, right? Most of the time, but yeah, if that deer ain't, you know, 200 plus pounds, what are you doing? Why are you even shooting it? And that's, that's crazy. It's two different cultures, you know what I mean? Because you would talk to a Southern guy and like there, there's parts in the South where they do have bigger deer, you know, like I've seen some pretty big deer come out of Alabama and stuff, certain parts, yeah. but like, you know, 150 pound deer in Georgia, like that's, that's a big white tail deer, you know, up here in Pennsylvania, like that's probably not a very big deer. And even if it has a big rack, like it's still a young deer or it's malnourished or it was hit or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's uh so, Go ahead. Um, it's just it's just different cultures, you know what I mean? And that's 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 what I one of the things I really like about Pennsylvania too is because like you have a little bit of both. It depends where you get. Like you were saying, when you get up into like Allegheny National Forest and stuff, like especially nowadays, like you you do see some some large antler deer coming off there. But like if you were paying attention and you're looking at the body size of the deer, like a lot of the times these guys aren't making the deer look better in the picture. It's just how big the deer is. You know what I mean? And then I could take you to certain parts of PA where it's it's just not like that. Like the, the deer are just not that big, even though they have the crop, you know, soybean, corn, whatever, you know, whatever they were be eating. They just, they just don't get that big. Now you get near mountains, you know, like my area, your area, you know, or you get up, up northwest of you a little yeah. bit, like, you know, your mountain deer, they're just, I don't care what anybody says, they're bigger and smarter. But that's just my personal yeah. opinion. It's weird. But, it doesn't really make sense to me because you figure like the farm the farm field deer right. which they do like out west they get gigantic bodies on them and stuff but like, right. that's what they age mm-hmm. so, I, like you think mm-hmm. the mountain deer with not like a ton of food source resources and stuff they would uh not be like that but they're just tanks and they their <laughs> antlers once you walk up to them the antlers are way bigger than what you thought because the bodies are so big on them yep no doubt man even like you know we're talking about the bucks but we can even talk about the does 
You know what I mean? I, I mean, I've I've seen them. I've shot them. They're monster deer, oh. and they walk around the woods. They're looking up in the air like this. You know, you're like, I, uh, I mean, they're 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 super nanny. Targeting like mature does. Like it's me and my mm-hmm. brother. We're always trying to see who can get the biggest shoot the biggest every year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have mm-hmm. so, I have a lot of respect for big old does. Like yeah. almost as much as the bucks. Yep. Yeah, no doubt, man. That 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 is a that's a conversation for another time for sure. Because like that's that's a long conversation. Because I do know actually some guys that like to talk about that. You know, hey, you know the the this doe's head was you know this big and it's this ginormous doe, and it is exciting to go after them and shoot them too. Because let's face it, you know we have to kill them too. Um, but you know, one thing I want to take you back to is let's talk about like how how did you get involved in the outdoors you know uh, there's a lot of us that are super lucky like myself where i grew up in a family that's like just you know we're they're whitetail crazy they're they're eating squirrels and and rabbits and killing turkeys and you know what i mean and and this is all stuff that was just given to me and i'm super lucky to have that kind of stuff and i you know i thank god every day but like did you have it so did you have a mentor is this something you learned on your own is it comes from a friend family so my family always like typical PA rifle hunters. And that was pretty mm-hmm. much it. Like a couple of days a year. I just, right. I don't know what it was. Like when I was seven or eight years old, I was like waiting to turn 12 for hunting. Like it's just, right. it latched on to me at a young age. And, uh, honestly, once I turned 16 and was able to go on my own, it was kind of my escape. Uh, not mm-hmm. to go into too many details on that, but it's just like, the woods pretty much saved me, you know, when I was younger. Yep. And yep. I said uh, my family was pretty much rifle hunters. No one bow hunted. No one flintlock hunted. Like, we would go after pheasants once in a while. But I basically right. just wanted to do it all. And I slowly, like, I got a bow and then I got a flintlock. And I just I wanted to be able to hunt all year long and just have right. a chance that I possibly could. And, uh Yeah to this day it's just been the best thing it's outside of my family and my my wife and my kids it's the best thing Mm -hmm. i've ever found so yeah how many kids do you have i have two kids boy and a girl yeah how old are they Uh, my boy's about to turn six here and my daughter's three so it's busy so yeah almost time though huh did did, i mean do you get them out there scouting with you and yeah this year uh, it's been so obviously I haven't been out in the woods much myself, but he's mm-hmm. always bugging me. I think uh, this coming Monday, I think forget what. I think there's a they have off school, and uh, I'm gonna try to take them okay. squirrel hunting on Monday. It's the last day of flintlock yeah. season, but it's it's a good chance to mm-hmm. get him out there if the weather's not too bad. For sure, um, my dad he's a nut man. He uh, he actually just bought. Uh, my little girl I have here, he bought one of those Rossi stubbies. I don't know if you've seen them yeah. or not. Just a little single yep. shot, 410. She's two years old. <laughs> yeah. like, and I'm like, I, I know you're excited, man. You know, like, you know, uh, but I do have my godson, and I just recently got him into squirrel hunting. And, dude, just a little trooper. It was, uh, I think it was a Saturday after uh, rifle. Uh, the first, uh, what have been the, I said first Saturday, but the Saturday after the end of rifle season, and I called him. I'm like, hey, you know, rifle season's done. You know, I'd like to take you out squirrel hunting. And he's only seven. I said, you know, I just want to get you in the woods, get you shooting a gun and all that. And he's like, I want to kill deer. I want to kill deer. I said, you know, we got, you know, we got a little bit of learning to do. And he he hadn't really ever shot a gun or anything. So it was cold that morning, man. It was really cold. It was like real Phil was like negative, and I'm like, man, I'm concerned. Like it's cold, you know. But boy, he stuck it out nice. there. And it's funny, you know, I found a good spot, put him down beside a tree, and I'm sitting right beside him. And this squirrel just weren't moving. I, we were in a really good spot, and, I, you know, I know we have a lot of squirrel in this spot, and they just – it was just cold. The wind wasn't really blowing, so I don't know why they weren't moving. But um, we're sitting there, and I look over at him, and, you know, he's kind of, like, shivering. And I said, all right, we're just going to take a walk, or we're going to go up here. And I had a couple water bottles on me, and I set a couple water bottles up for him. I said, we're going to shoot these water bottles. And that was like – you know, he was Best like, thing in the world. this is right, man. And it, and it's, you can't put a price on that stuff, nope. you know, just passing that kind of stuff down. So super, super exciting, man. I'm, I'm really excited for all that stuff. And I'm sure you are too, but 
Yeah, I, I talk to a lot of guys, like I said, you know, even like you being raised in that environment, like are, we're blessed too, because I know people who will reach out to me and they're like, hey, I just would really like to learn how to hunt. And I'm like, well, you know, it's not that easy. And I would just teach you like what I know, but at the same time, I'm struggling to get time for myself too. So you don't want to be that guy. It's like, I can't, but at the same time, you're like, I, I want to help. So like when I talk to some guys that are like retired or they're bored or whatnot, and I'm like, hey, I know this guy. We Would you help him out? You know, just teach him how to shoot. Teach him how to hold a rifle. Yeah. You know what I mean? T teach him how, you know, rifle safety or, uh, you know, teach him how to flush a, a rabbit out of a brush pile. Yeah. You know, just stupid little stuff. I wish that there was more guys out there like that because I feel like there's a lot of retired dudes that are, like, just bored, yeah, you know. But, unfortunately, them are the only guys that have the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, uh, like, with my Facebook pages and Instagram and stuff, I'll, uh, I'll post. Sometimes it seems to, like, the avid hunter, it seems like, uh, why do you even bother? Like, just, like, simple stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to do one on blood trailing here coming up, but it's, like, like, I don't have the time to take everyone out, but maybe that that person will read this thing, like, just how to do it simply. Yeah, like, that's great. Because some of these podcasts and stuff, you get into them, and, like, you think you need a master's degree in deer hunting by the time you're done. You know, it's like, you're it's right. it on this point, on this wind, mm -hmm. when the moon is underneath the sky, and that, <laughs> and if you don't, you're if right. you don't tiptoe in there six hours before daylight, mm -hmm. you don't have a shot at them, you know? And like, I think for like the new hunter who's trying to get into it, if they listen to that, I don't know that they even go hunting because it's, it's kind of a turn off if you're not understanding right. what's being said there. Uh, and you're absolutely right. You know, or you have the guys that are, Hey, if you don't you shoot your Matthews and got your Ozonics and you know, where you're. Uh, your new first light and your, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah. and some of that stuff is great, but like I tell people, it's right. like if someone tells you that there's only one way to do something or there's a best mm -hmm. way to do something, that person is not, they're not the full, they're not reaching the full potential that they could reach as a hunter because right there are so many different situations where so many different types of tree stands, strategies, there's not mm -hmm. one size fits all, and I just don't. I don't like it when people get to talking that way because it's just right. It's not true. I understand, man. That's the same thing, you know. Like I use hang-ons, climbers. I have a saddle, and I'm not saying you need all this stuff, but you know, it, especially like with the with the saddle. I remember when I got mine. I think it would have been four years ago now. And um, you know, all the stuff I was reading, these guys are like, it's the end all, be yep. all, you know, like, and. I don't know, like, I like it, and I enjoy doing it, you know, and, and I actually wear my saddle as, like, my, like, a harness, too, like, yeah. kind of like a hybrid yeah, setup, nice. just nice. because, like, yeah, like, it's easy to get up and down the tree, I like how big the loops are for my lineman belt and stuff like yeah. that, um, and I just feel safe, like, sometimes I can hang a tree stand, I'll just throw my tether above my tree stand, and I'll just, like, I'll hang in the saddle and put it on, yeah, and instead nice. of, like, leaning up against my lineman, it is, it really is, and I actually almost got a shot at a deer doing that, I was hanging a tree stand, and I was in my saddle, and I turned my head, and son of a gun, you know, there's a buck standing there, Jeez. and it's a nice buck. And he didn't see me, you know, wire my bow up and get ready and everything. He's just a little bit too far. Huh. You know, I think he, I measured him at like 48 yards, and I just, in the timber, I, yeah, I just, tough. I don't feel comfortable shooting that far. You know what I mean? And it's not that I'm not confident. It's yeah. just, I, I, I've wounded too many deer in my life. And that's what it comes down to. So it makes you a little bit gun shy, and you kind of like, we're like, eh, because you, you live with that. You know, and I'm sure if you've been there. Oh my God. You know, like I live with that stuff all the time. Yeah. So, um, but you said you guys use cameras and that is something I like to talk to people about. So like love, hate relationship with cameras or, I mean, you like using them. How many times have you burnt yourself? Like, or felt like you burnt yourself? Like, Oh man, like I need to go check that camera because I haven't been in there in two weeks and I know that there's got to be a buck in there or, you're on vacation or you're somewhere else and then you go and check a camera and that buck was there and you're like, oh, I'm pulling your freaking hair out. Yeah. I, uh, fortunately with not having very much time, I don't get into using them that much to where I feel like that. And honestly, mm -hmm. that's part of the reason that I don't like to just rely on them. Cause I, I can't tell you how many guys with cell cameras 
are like, oh, I should have been over. Like, I hear they tell me these stories, and it's like, I was in this stand, and then he was over here in this other place. So I went over there, and then he showed up on my camera back where I was. And I'm like, I mean, I personally don't use cell cameras. Uh, it's just, that's uh, a bridge too far for me. But I'm not going to, mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm not going to hammer guys for doing it. But, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track here, but basically, uh, so we'll go out, and to tell you the truth, I didn't put one camera out this year, because I just didn't have the time, but when we usually do, we'll go out in like August, and we'll put out however many cameras are still working from last year, basically, <laughs> and, uh, I got you, you know, if, if we have time, like my buddy, he'll usually go up, like if we're going to hunt in November there, he'll, he'll go a day early, and he'll kind of run through that area and just grab cards just to see what's up right the thing about hunting those mountains up there is that which is where most of our cameras are those deer are not on a daily pattern so they're they're, they're like roamers like it could be three five seven days before that buck comes back through there like your best case scenario for having him multiple days in a row is the fact that there's a hot doe group there and he's not going to just leave. Like he, he's Roman, right. he hits that doe group and he hangs out for three or four days and you just hope that that overlaps with your vacation time, basically. Um, yep. Probably the biggest benefit to the cameras is giving you hope that there are deer there. Because like when you hunt those big woods, right. it could, you know... Uh, uh, there's days where you don't see a deer, you know, and it's, and you're looking at this vast mountainside and you're thinking like, how is a deer going to walk within 30 yards of me here? Like, it doesn't make any sense right. in your head, but if you can pull out your phone and you see that one big guy that came through last year around this time, it just gives you the mental boost to be able to sit there and, uh, you know, stick it out. Yeah. Yep. I know exactly what you're saying. I've parked my butt on a couple different points in, in Big Woods country. And there was one time we went on this trip, five days, man, five days. I seen one doe. Hey, the last day, the shot presented itself. And when the deer come in, I mean, it was big 10 point, probably 150, maybe 160 inch deer, humongous. But when he came in, what happened was I had got down two days before and it was dry and I had thrown my paracord up around these tree limbs. I was hunting in these okay. beech trees where I found this big community scrape and I threw the paracord on there because I had sat in that stand so long and I kept saying, that spot, that's going to get me, right? That's going to get me. And didn't, didn't he come in and hit my ground set right in that spot? And what he did was he turned and he, he was facing away from me. And some guys, I don't know, you know, I, I play it over my head, and I'm like, I probably could have made a shot. You know, if my shot placement was right, I probably could have drove it down, you know, right next to his spine, come out, you know, right in his brisket or on, on you know, his, his opposite side. But like I said before, I've I've probably wounded a good four or five Pope and Young Bucks in my life. And it's, yeah, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not a bad shot. You know, I could take you in a yard, and we can shoot, and you would be like, hey, man, like, you're good. You know, Stuff it just – Stuff I'm telling you, man. Like I had, uh, I quit using mechanical broadheads. I had a Rage broadhead, and I, it's not like I have a gripe against them or anything. But this is what happened. I had a Rage broadhead break at the ferrule. You know, to me, a, a broadhead should never, ever, ever, ever break at the ferrule of all places. Yeah. You know that that can't happen. You know what I mean? And I, I didn't make the best shot on a deer. I, I'm pretty sure I hit him in the shoulder. But when I found my arrow, you know, I was, I buried it. You know, to the point yeah. to where I probably should have killed the deer. It was the biggest deer I've ever hit in my life. And I tell you, like, I, I, he was all barnacled out, man. He had, like, these points on his antlers, like, all over the base of him. This was in Indiana. Jeez. It was wild. It was just, just a craziest encounter I've ever had with a buck. He just, he come running in like a dog, tongue, his tongue's hanging out, chasing this doe, making all these noises I never even heard of. I was afraid to get down out of the tree stand like he was going to maul me. It was wild, man. I had such a good good time, and I ended up losing that deer. You know, I tracked him for three days, just found some blood yeah. clots here and there after some 
some good blood. And I talked to some guys at work, and it wasn't long afterward, and they were from Indiana. And they're like, well, did the dog find him? And I'm like, what dog? And they're like, you didn't track him with a dog. And I'm like, oh, like, there I am, you know, this hill jack from Pennsylvania. Yeah. And this is before yeah. we could do that stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah, hey. Think of it didn't even cross my mind you know nowadays like i have two buddies that have dogs and dude they're fine and deer i mean it's it is impressive it's it's awesome and and i'm i'm all behind it like oh, i yeah, you too. won't hear no grape from me like if, if you know what i mean you hit a deer and you you found it thank god you know we should have we should have been doing yeah. this years and years and years ago like the, the dog guys they'll post like pretty much their stats from the year and it's like man, right and that's a lot of deer that would have got lost like for sure, for right. sure would have got lost. Yeah. Well, you know, like there's, and there's certain rules like, and I know like you'd probably side with me with a lot of these, um, but just like, okay, like we were talking about cell phone cameras. Okay. If they said, well, you can either have dogs or you can have cell phone cameras. I bet you a bunch of guys are going to get rid of your cell phone cameras and they're going to keep the dogs. I would. Right. But we could have had cell phone cameras for how many years and then like we're just now getting dogs. Yeah. You know, and that, and that. And I don't want to go down the road of the Sunday hunting thing, but like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, let's, you know, let's, we need to pick it up. You know, it's, it's just wild to me. It's, we'll allow certain things, you know, like, thank God we don't allow semi-automatic rifles. That's just my personal opinion, but you know, well, for deer at least. You gotta watch, you're touching all these touchy subjects. (laughs) I know, I end up losing some followers. (laughs) No, I know. I have, you know, I have ARs and all that other stuff, but I don't know, man. You know, like, if we were a shotgun-only state or something like that, yeah, okay, you know. But at the same time, like, I don't want it to be that way. Where I hunt, I yeah. like using a rifle, you know what I mean? And we're blessed that we can do that because I hunt other states where it's shotgun-only or straight-walled, you know, now things are straight-walled and whatnot. But, yeah, there's, I mean, we could go down that road. I don't really want to go down that road, but... um. Some other things I wanted to get into. So you've been hunting for years and years and years. I want to hear, as soon as I say, oh, man, do you hunt? And you think of, like, that one deer you shot, I want to hear that story. Like, you know, I know you got that one where you're like, oh, man, that that deer, I think about him yeah. all the time. Uh, you mind if I grab him here? Yeah, go ahead. So this deer, this is him. okay. This is a, this is an Allegheny National Forest buck, and the camera doesn't nice uh, do him justice. But he, uh, I think I didn't get this deer aged. This was back before I could get him aged, or before I realized that you could even uh-huh. do that. But basically, I think this deer was ancient because, like, his skull even down here is massive. Like he's his his just his bone structure is much bigger than any deer I've ever shot, and I don't know if that happens over age or that's just genetically the way he was. But he's like an absolute tank right. of a deer. His burrs like you you just can't. I don't know. He's I didn't even realize what he was when I walked up to him that day, and I kind of feel really stupid now that I can sit here and appreciate him, you know. But uh. Are you looking for the story, or what are you looking for? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear, let's hear how it went down so with him. That was the first year I ever hunted up there in the A&F with my buddy Justin. And in bow season, I had missed an eight point that was a little bit bigger than him because I just wasn't used to seeing big deer walk by me like that. Like, uh, right. So that was rifle season. Then I came back. And this is rifle season with this buck, and we had snow that day. I've been blessed with a lot of great days in the woods where we just happened to have snow, and I happened to be there. Um, yeah, makes it yeah, way I better. Just, I don't know what it is. Even I mean, yeah, the hunting, it's a it's a cheat code, but it's also like like the memory right. just sticks with me. But we were sneaking out along these big giant mm-hmm. hillsides, peeking down over, and uh, I think it was like. 1 30 in the afternoon we saw a group of deer moving below us and there was some big does and i picked one out my buddy couldn't get a shot because he was going to shoot first and i threaded this it was one of the best shots i ever made also but i threaded the needle down to this big mountain doe and she dropped on her 
in the spot, like 200 yards away, went down, Damn. you know, took care of her and drug her up to the top. And like, granted at this point, we're like two and a half miles from the road. And like guys will say like, you can't be that far from the road in certain parts of PA. But you were, <laughs> but like, as far as like an actual way that I can get this deer out, I'm two and a half miles away from my truck. So we decided to stage her and hunt the rest of the day up there on top. Um, and by this time, it's like probably 3.30. It's getting getting to that magic hour. So my buddy set me in this one, like it was like a big bowl. And I was up at the head of it looking down. There was like some cherry trees there and they were dropped. They had dropped a lot of cherries that year and you could see where the deer had been feeding. And he went up over. Mm -hmm. oh, we got one of the uh oh um she's okay i don't know what's going on okay um so my buddy went up over to another spot where there were some cherry trees and stuff and i was just sitting there and thinking like how is a deer because i could see a lot here i could see way everywhere i was like how is a deer ever gonna get here and then 30 minutes before dark, I see a big lone deer coming out of this bowl, like just appeared out of nowhere. And he beelined right up to me. I just, he got to about 75 yards and he turned broadside and there was some beach brush there. And I picked out a spot and he walked right into it, stopped feeding on those cherries. And I, I put a really good shot on him, which at that point in my hunting career, I had messed up on a lot of decent bucks. Like, and like bucks that were a lot smaller than him. Like I just get so nervous and I would fall apart, you know, and he was probably like maybe the second deer where I finally started to get it together. And, uh, and I still mm -hmm. miss, like I said earlier, but made a great shot. My buddy was there and that was like our first, one of our first major hunts together. And now we've just like our wives think that me and him are married and they're just part of the show. But, uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> that deer, just the overall, like, everything about that was, that's a tough question that you, you asked there, because it's like every year in my posts and stuff, it's like, man, I don't know how it could get any better. And then, then once you actually have to start <laughs> narrowing it down to like one hunt, it's getting, mm -hmm. it's getting pretty hard. Right. That, that's a good thing because it means I've had a lot of them, you know, but, uh, right. Yeah. I don't know. I've just had I've had some great memories, but yeah, it's, and that's one thing, you know, like we were talking about before we come on, you know, the, the whole premises of the show is like to outline like Pennsylvania outdoorsmen, you know, and it's, and I'm not saying like the Pennsylvania outdoorsmen are better than the other state, you know what I mean? Or nothing like that. It's just like the heritage and, um, the, the way that the guys have a lot of pride in the way they go hunting. Yeah. You know, you, you would talk to some people from some other states and it's like they don't really have that connection between the outdoorsmen. You know what I'm saying? Which is kind of sad because the guys are probably yeah. longing for that. They just, you know, this is one of the only states where I can jump on social media and find 50 people in 10 minutes that would will love to sit down and talk to me about turkey and deer and everything else that's in the woods, you know, whether it's reptiles or whatever they, they you know that they want to just sit down and talk I wish, um i wish more guys would so, understand that like it's it's not mm -hmm. very common and we have like a pretty special thing here and if you get on social yep. media it's it's a crap show and like everyone thinks we have it oh, the worst yeah. out of anyone but it's like we have it so good we have like mm -hmm. like four million acres of land that's accessible to hunt in the state like you know and even if you just yep. do like the public like the for sure like not access properties and stuff it's like it's, a, it's hundreds of thousands of acres within a couple yeah. within an hour drive of you i bet you there's something you know and it's like other states like yeah. texas is like five percent public maybe or two percent or something it's huge you know mm -hmm. i don't know we got yep. we got it really good yeah no, you're absolutely right we have a great out-of-state program you you know people that are listening because i know we have some listeners for the show that are from out of state you guys want to come here like we're more than happy to have you. I see a lot of, uh, you know, residents uh, from Ohio. Like I said, I have a lot of family out there. And, like, they're just unhappy with how many Pennsylvania guys come there. And I'm like, you you guys, like, you, you guys don't get it. Like, yeah, I understand. Like, 
okay, we're coming and we're shooting, you know, we're shooting your deer, you know, you know, them, those guys. But like, you don't understand the opportunity that this brings for everybody. You know, like that, that's whenever you get in this conversation where you have your, well, I used a compound. Well, that guy used a crossbow, you know, F that guy, he used a crossbow. Like it's, it's not about that. You know what I mean? Cause really if your bones come down to bones, that guy down the road might be using a spear. So you using your compound, yeah. you ain't nothing. You know what I mean? So I, I just, I don't understand where that, you know, that partisan comes from. And it's just like, I posted a question uh, just to start a conversation up. I was bored on uh, one of the hunting Boy. pages or whatever. And like, Oh, I shouldn't even have <laughs> went there, man. I got, I got bamboozled, man. That was like, they were beating me with baseball bats. Like, Why would you ever want to yeah. do that? And I'm like, look, man, I just was bringing up a conversation, yeah. you know? God forbid you have so, an opposing opinion, you know? I'm telling you, you know, and it's just for conversation piece, you know, I like to hear what people want to talk about and stuff, but it's, it's a great place to live. Um, I really enjoyed here and, and I know that you have a lot of pride for the state too. What? What are what are some goals going into this year that you have? Do you have like I know for me and I and I haven't got to do this yet. And I swear I've been after this goal for like three years now. But I want to bring a deer out on water access. You know whether it's going down the creek uh, in a kayak, maybe it's across. A, I probably wouldn't do a large body of water because I'm just not yeah. that experienced in a kayak or a canoe. But like uh, you know like a nice size crick or something like that where i float in you know i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna get the deer and that's just that's that's one thing i'd like to do that and um just you know camp in the back of my pickup truck and save a little bit of money on a hotel or drive into my one buddy's house where it's a good it's a pretty good drive away you know save some gas money and then you know do do one of my public land hunts in ohio or west virginia like yeah. that you know so do you have any goals in mind that you want to get uh, done this year I mean, in all honesty, I'm not even done processing this year, but uh, I've been I've been trending towards like holding out for nicer bucks. Like this year, that mm -hmm. was my goal was to hold out for a, a nicer buck in bow season. And then if I didn't connect on one, I was going to take that tag into flintlock season and try to shoot a buck with my flintlock. So like a okay. flintlock buck is definitely on my list i've just been fortunate enough to shoot like my last five bow bucks in a row or something um i'm always looking at like those out-of-state hunts i i don't know it's it's hard to say we'll probably end up back in new york again but definitely would like to go a little farther west here maybe indiana or something um as far mm -hmm. as like a specific goal, I honestly don't know if I have one that I can tell you outside of like that flint lock buck. That's for sure something that I want to do. The, the past four years, I've had a legal buck within 50 yards in flint lock season and no buck tag in my pocket. Now, whether I could stay calm and actually right. pull that off, I don't know, but uh, I'd like a chance at it one of these days. Yeah, that's that's a heck of a goal, man. And like that's that's a feat in its own. One of my buddies actually awesome. did it this year. And yeah, I've shot deer with the flintlock, never shot a buck with a flintlock, um, but, I, you know, I've shot deer with it, great time. I, more of anything with the flintlock season, it's very similar to the rifle season for me at least. Like, I like to go out just to camaraderie, you yep. know, get the guys together, kind of like that, hey, you didn't kill that deer alone. Like, we, yeah. we killed that deer. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, whether we were pushing or we were just all hunting together or whatever it is, but it's just, like, you, you know, you get that camaraderie with it. Now, I will say in flintlock season, we put drives on and we have a yep. good time, you know, because once the deer get herded up like this, it's yep. it's fun. It can be a lot of fun, you know, but at the same time, you know, like I want to preach on here, like, practice safety, you know what I mean? If you can wind check the deer, wind check the deer, you know what I mean? If you, drives are great, you just got to know what you're doing. Everybody's got to have their head on a swivel, and especially yeah, with it's rifles. It's really important but, to have like a close group um, of guys that understand. I don't, you know, yep. if you pull ten random people together, that that that's an opportunity for something to go wrong. But uh, like we mm -hmm. do the same stuff. Yep. We have a close group of buddies, and it's always safe and it's always fun in flint walk season. Right. Yeah. Anytime, you know, I know that I've questioned a couple groups that I've. I, I didn't go with them. You know what I mean? Like if, if I get that feeling like in any way, yep. like 
hey, that guy would rather take my head off than wait three seconds for that deer. You know what I mean? So that's, you know, that's, that's one thing I like to preach because I'm, I'm huge, you know, on the camaraderie of everybody pushing deer and stuff, and especially Pennsylvania. Like I've talked to people who've never been on a deer drive before and they're like, they don't even know what that is. And I'm like, I mean, there's plenty of ways to kill them. Like we were saying before, like there's not one way to do it, but when it, when, when the nitty gritty comes down the nitty gritty, I mean, you, you know, with a gun and I know guys that do it in bow, they push deer and bow. And I mean, I'm not going to say I agree with it. I'm not going to say that I don't agree with it, you know, because trust me, I mean, I know guys that do it and they kill bucks every year doing it. But at the same time, I think that it's really hard to always get a ethical shot. If yeah, you know what I'm comes saying? down to where you're at as a hunter and what your own, you know, like people can tell you whatever they want to tell you, but unless you're willing to hold yourself accountable, then it's, I don't know. I think whenever people hear deer drives, they think of like that worst case scenario where there's like 50 guys screaming and right. blowing air horns and stuff, but it's, but, uh, banging pots yeah, and pans. And like and... If you have a couple guys out there and you're doing it the right way and you're just, uh, yeah, it's the say right way. I mean, people can take that wrong, but like, Mm, yeah the I mean, safe way they win i don't even i can't even tell you how many like they they win most yep. of the time you know and i don't know mm -hmm. just real quick i had a guy i posted a one of our group hunts and he was like yeah driving deer that's that's uh that's real sportsman like or whatever and i'm like yeah man i mean you're right i should go sit up in my tree stand with my scent blocker suit and my ozonics and my range finder to tell me exactly how far it is and, and i should zip that arrow through mm -hmm. it before it ever knows i exist in the world like it mm -hmm. it's all like you know what i'm saying like is that fair to the deer like what what's fair to the deer like it's just you know the bottom line is they have a fair That's chance and like the deer can get away and they can sometimes not get away like it's just that's probably the same guy that wrote on my one of my posts one time that said that deer need the day off on Sunday because they, you know, they, they get chased around, you know. Hey, not not that they don't get chased around by predators or anything on Sunday, you know, that they take the yeah. Sunday off too. You know, that's that's whenever the coyotes and the and the black bears, they watch football instead yeah. of chasing deer. I should deer just throw around, it out you know? there that because a lot of PA sportsmen don't understand this, but like, so the game commission, they're for Sunday hunting, like. There's so like if you get yes. on Facebook, there's so many people that don't understand that. They're like, what? You know, and they're they're just like throwing flack at the PGC, and it's this is completely in the legislature's right. hand, which is a huge issue. Yep. Like the game commission should be the ones responsible for all of this. Like that's their job Absolutely. is to manage wildlife. The fact that we have a couple people in Harrisburg sitting there that can vote on this with zero knowledge understanding or background in wildlife management is a is a big mistake and honestly like pa wildlife will never get a the fair shake that it deserves as long as that's the system that we're going on right now you know yeah i don't know yep it's a yep no i, I agree 100 percent. but no that is good to throw out there because a lot of people that is a misconception and yes i mean all the game wards i talk to well why why wouldn't they want sunday hunting you know, that's just like, hey, the game commission wants all the deer dead. No, the game commission wants you to go kill the deer. That don't no, mean they want that, all the deer dead. They're going to manage it. Like, I don't know. People think that if it, even if we get Sunday hunting, people think that that means every Sunday from, like, there's still, like, 600,000 hunters in Pennsylvania. And, like, there's only so many deer. So, like, the game commission is still going to put limitations on stuff. Like, it's not just a, a mm -hmm. free-for-all, like, you know. We got to manage right. things. We can't just, I don't know. It's, it's a tough thing to wrap. It's, and then you can't even barely have this conversation with people on social media. Cause they I know if you can get past right. three sentences with somebody, I like congratulate them and thank them because it's like a dying art being able to talk to each other. Right. Well, what it comes down to is I'm not a biologist. You know, I'm not some scientist that knows the way the deer herd works. I just like to watch deer and I know a little bit about them and I know a little bit about the way they act, you know, and I know how to try to go kill them. Yep. You know what I mean? So for me to tell you that this will work and that will work, what do I know? As long as I can buy my license every year and go hunt deer, Same then here. I'm happy. 
So now if you give me that Sunday, I'd be a little more happy because we're just talking about work and family and all that stuff. You know, that's that's when yep. it gets tough. So um, we're coming to the end of of this here. I I want to ask you a question. This might be a little bit hard to answer too. So I'd like three guys that you would absolutely pick over everybody else to go hunting with. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a famous guy. I don't know. <clears throat> Give me three guys, and I don't care what you're hunting. You could be hunting birds. You could be hunting uh, pheasants. You could be hunting squirrels, rabbits, deer. Maybe you guys are out looking for spotted newts. I don't know. <clears throat> whatever <laughs> whatever well, would be floating I mean, your boat. You could probably tell that I'm not like a giant celebrity uh, hunter. Uh, follow, follower or whatever. I got gotcha. you. I'm like really mm -hmm. about my my close friends and family. So like, one would be like my my best friend Justin Crosley. He was the one I was talking about earlier. Like, it just for sure. Uh, my brother Matt. I guess uh, we just every year we spend it. Like we don't get much time outside of hunting together, but like that's our thing. And the deer are usually right. in trouble when we're together but uh and then my father-in-law <laughs> dave he's uh he's been a you know outside of being my father-in-law he's been a, a giant role model in my life and uh just a really really great hunting buddy and we've all we've had some awesome stories like all three of those guys we've had a ton of stories and they're usually with me like in new york they were all there so it's just uh those are that's it yep those are the yep those are the guys you want to have around. I like I like to go over that question because it's really hard to answer, but at the same time, you know, as an outdoorsman, like we know we know the guys that we want around, and like you know, I know that there's times where I have my brother around, and I'm like, you know, if I was alone or I had maybe this or that person with me, like I might not take a shot at that deer because like I don't like I need help. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Or like. You know, like I know one thing that him and I do for each other is like if it's late season or like one of us doesn't have a buck down, like we're putting 15 yep. miles on and we're yep. going to move some deer. You know what I mean? Like you you pull the trigger. I'll get in there yep. and we're going to make it happen. guys that I mentioned, that's the way they are. Like we don't care. The big yep. thing is, is like out of those three guys and me, we don't care who pulls the trigger. And I think that is so huge mm -hmm. when you're trying to find your hunting buddy. And I – like, I hope everyone gets that hunting buddy that, you know, because, yeah. but there can't, there's no jealousy. There's no, I mean, like outside of like friendly competition, which we're men, like that's what we do. But, but that right, question, like right. if you would ask me next year or the pro year after that, like I'd, I, that'd be tough. Cause my boy, he's definitely going to be on that list. You know, he's just, he's just not there right. yet. So. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I, I understand, and you know, I I applaud you for raising them in that environment, and it is fun, man. It's like you said, you know, it's so much fun to watch them grow into that, and then not only that, just like the whole process, you know, and like we were saying about the whole heritage, like you know, the the getting the deer out, and then everybody stands around, it and everybody's like, you know, yeah, you know, we did it, you know, we did it, yep. even if it's like you were you you worked alone all season, you know, even like your wife's part of it, because like without her, you wouldn't yeah, get out in the woods, sure. right? And, and then you got the rest of the process. Like, do you butcher yep. your own deer? Okay, so you butcher your own deer, and then, you know, your kids see that. Your wife's part of that. Like, you know, your buddy Justin, your brother, uh, your father-in-law, everybody's part of that. And, like, you, there's just nothing that I've ever experienced in my life that's, like, that brings people together like oh. that. Yep. That's you know, it's 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 – it's just wild, man. You know, and and then and like I didn't grow up on a farm or anything, but like I can understand why like like people get kind of addicted yep. to that. You know, you'll see people like grow up and like they'll 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 shy away from farm because it's hard work, you know, and stuff like that. But then it's like they always come back to that, and and I it, it's 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 the heritage of it. Yep. You know what I mean? It's it sticks with you, and it, like you're just kind of bred unique. into it, and it. It is. It is. And then, like, you get to eat it. And, like, you're watching your kids eat it, and they're like, this is great. And you're like, it's great. this is, you know, this is, it is. It's it's really hard to beat. And then the thing that's crazy, man, is, like, when guys like me and you leave, and we leave all our mounts on the wall and all that stuff, that stuff don't mean nothing to nobody else. You know what I mean? It may be to our kids because yeah. they remember that stuff, but that's that's it. You know, like, to the guy that lives down the road, that mount, nope. 
that don't mean nothing to him. You know, hey, this this guy mounted his deer for what reason? Paid tax dermis five hundred dollars for this. Tell's wrong with him. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, like I wish, I hope that they dig a grave <laughs> deep enough for me that they can put all my deer heads. Oh, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, but yeah, it's just um, it, it, it's a great ride to go down. And uh, before I get going here, I just want everybody to 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 know where they can find you. Let them know your YouTube channel, um, where they can shoot you any messages, you know, if they want to talk to you about anything, or maybe they're in your area, or like you were saying, like, maybe you might have a hunter or uh, another outdoorsman reach out, maybe have some questions, like, hey, can you help me find a guy to help me do this, or can you post a video about this or that? uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, you can find us at Legendary Pursuits. Um, You'll find, like I said before, tips and tactics, and if anyone has any questions, I am... I'm super willing to, to help anyone. Uh, my personal Instagram account would be the best way to get a hold of me. That's AP Woodsman is what I go by. And uh, don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, if you're looking for like down to earth hunting videos, our YouTube channel, like we keep it real. We show the ups and the downs. Like if you watch my bow hunt from this year, you'll see that, that it was a it was a major roller coaster ride of the ups and downs. And I, a lot of people said, uh, well, why did you show that? You know? And I said, because people need to see that. Like it's not, it's not yeah. all, it doesn't always go perfect, you know? And, uh, we just, we keep no. it real. So. No. I, yep. I, and I wish it did, but at the same time, if it always yep. went perfect, then you wouldn't want to do it. Yep. You know, that's just the way it is. So, well, brother, Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. This is the uh, the comeback episode. So um, I'll definitely have you come through again. You know, I, I like trying to have guests more than once because, like you were saying, man, like it's always changing. You know, you take your son on the squirrel hunt this weekend or two weekends from now, which whatever we were talking about. And, um, you know, squirrel season doesn't actually come out for a while. So might get a couple more trips with them and that's another talking point we can go over you know what i mean and those are the kinds of stories i want to hear and i know a lot of the listeners that are on here like you could turn on any podcast you want and get a lot of different tactics and stuff like that but like we were saying you know just dumb it down hey we went out squirrel hunting and the squirrel come down out of the tree we shot it (laughs) you know what i mean and my kid lit up with this smile so this one right yeah exactly Exactly. Yeah, I appreciate so, you having me on, and it was great talking to you, and look forward to doing it again sometime. No doubt, man. Well, thank you, brother. Uh, have a great night, and uh, we'll catch Take up care, with brother. you soon. We'll see you.